It's kind of weird seeing this guy without a pair of bird dogs and a shotgun slung over his shoulder. This is a good friend of mine, Eric Karish, who lives in northern Wisconsin and is one of the world's premier rough grouse and woodcock guides. And we both live in northern Wisconsin. We decided to do a show for you where most walleyes in the country are caught on small lakes. But we're not gonna do the traditional slip bobber stuff and all that. We're gonna show you some oddball techniques. Techniques that once you see them, you're gonna go, oh, that would work on my lake. And it's going to be a different type of show. You're gonna catch a lot of fish. Come with us and get your next bite. Smaller Wisconsin lakes are super cool because they're unique. Small doesn't mean simple either. He's getting a little bit lighter. I'll step around you and get the board off. There are a lot of ways to catch walleyes, depending on the time of year and what you have to work with as far as structure. Oh, there he is, he's not too big. He just came at it sideways. Black and gold again. Yeah, hmm. kinda liking that color. But Gary and Eric are looking to show that trolling. Little guys, real, real small ones. This one actually is probably 14 inches. A lot of lakes have gone to 15, although there's a lot of them that are, well, you can only keep one over 14 too. So every lake's a little different here. But. Has every bit of place amongst more traditional techniques like jigging. Nice eye. Oh, that's a good one. Up first on the docket though. He's on there. You got him. You angled him. Figuring out trolling and what it can entail. This is one of the few times that I've fished cranks on boards. We're fishing them so slow that you almost have to use tattle flakes because there's some small fish. A few key differences between angling and fishing are patience and deductive reasoning. A shaker. We have got the 10 inches down, buddy. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So where are the big fish? But using experience and testing that against legwork, Maybe we need to let out about five feet. They're actually feeding though. Those are the tools that shape a pattern. Way out in the depth. <laughs> Even if time, sometimes, is the only thing that can really help to start tell the story. He's a nicer fish. So there are some out here in the deeper water. A lot of little ones, but even some nicer ones. This is prime, prime time too, right? You know, low light, so. Depths, speeds, and testing your best theories during times of day that are known for a little extra magic in the bite. I'm not feeling a whole lot of resistance here, but. He cleared it. The last one didn't give us anything till we got him to the side of the boat. Can sometimes help to bring the best parts of a plan to the surface, literally. Missed him. He is the right kind. That was a masterful net job. Still a little guy, but at the end here, end of the day here, we're starting to get into some fish out deep. I think we might come back in the morning, Eric, and try this early in the morning. I have a feeling some bigger fish are gonna bite then. Weather can be a wild card day to day. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, gentlemen. But also hour to hour, up here where storms move fast. A little bit different ball game than it was in the evening. We got pretty big undercells moving through. In fact, we have to watch if there's much more lightning. We'll probably make this a mid-morning start instead of early morning start. And thankfully, a nasty morning thunderstorm passes, leaving some wind behind it, which might be the tipping point on evening out the frequency of the trolling bite. It's kind of cool We're out here in the basin on a little lake like this. This, and this is a good fish. This one's nice and heavy. It's a pretty good one. To pop more consistently throughout the day. That's a good one. Holy man. Oh, it is Beauty. a Oh, that's a nice what fish. What a nice Eric. fish. Holy man. How far back was that one? I had that one at 60, so it was probably three feet above the bottom. You know, 
kind of staggering top to bottom. That's a nice fish. There must be a little school of fish here because you got that, we got that little one out there and then right about the same time, boom, this guy hit. You know, this is such an overlooked situation, Eric, in northern Wisconsin lakes is these basins. Nobody fishes them, man. This is a gorgeous fish here. Wow. For a northern Wisconsin fish, this is about as good as it gets. That's a nice fish. Yep. I mean, you can get bigger ones than I would expect. We could get a bigger one anytime. But this is a good bread and butter fish, you know? I'll take them every day. Last night, when we were out here in this open water in the basin fishing, about the last hour of the day became like a magic time. All of a sudden, the small fish we were catching during the day turned into good-sized fish. And, you know, part of it is we probably figured out the patterns a little bit better. But northern Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan lakes, that last hour, that first hour of daylight is always a magic time. Well, the one thing that I think that we've seen here today with this lake is magic time might be all day long if you've got a lot of wind. When I troll the open basins of the big lakes, the Great Lakes, sometimes big winds mean that means that the bite goes downhill but right now we we continued to fish out here the wind really came up and all of a sudden those little fish turned into big ones again just like that last hour of last night so the moral of that story is if you're fishing your lake and jigging and doing whatever you like to do and it gets really windy and it's tough to control the boat pull up your gear go out to the middle put down the trolling lines you may be surprised magic hour might be all day long the next bite is presented by Mercury. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. There are a lot of lakes in northern Wisconsin, and each can be quite unique in structure. We got one, Eric. Get him. Pretty good fish. Sweet. So what is it from the general to the specific that Gary and Eric? I haven't seen him yet, he's staying down. Oh no, he's a dandy. Are looking for and what can make non-Great Lakes still Great Lakes for trolling walleyes. It's a beauty! Oh, yeah. oh, oh and he comes off. off in the net! <laughs> I like that, it makes it easy on us. Got this boat coasting in neutral right now, but it's actually windy enough that it's going the perfect speed. We're trying to stay one three I'll to one six. I'll let you grab six. the fish. Yeah. And I'll take care of this treble hook. Yeah. Look how fat these fish are. This fish here is eating in the mud, and he's normally a lot of places uh, mud fish are really really skinny, but for a fish this size, he's got a good belly on him. A lot of people are going to wonder, how do you go about judging whether or not you control the mud flats or the open water? So a couple of parameters that you want to look for. I like to look for lakes that are not super deep in the center, or maybe a big bay. And usually it should top out at the most maybe 30 feet. Should have a relatively flat bottom. If there are sunken rock humps, uh, if there are, are raises or, or slight dips in, in the mud basin itself, so much the better. I like having rock humps. A lake that's 15 feet deep that has a few rock humps that come up to eight or nine. Perfect. Just troll over the tops of the rock humps, troll around the rock humps, and stay out in the basin. In this particular lake, that's exactly what we have. We have 13 to 15 feet of water. We've got some rock humps uh, here scattered out here and there. We hit them once in a while. And vary your baits from deep to shallow until you start getting bites. You duplicate it and you can pinpoint them. Oh yeah, this is dandy. Yep. He ain't heather. It's an eye. Oh, yeah. We got the it's right nice kind. Yeah, another beauty. <laughs> another nice one. We found the pot of nice ones. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. Yep. Northern Wisconsin, guys. Fishing planer boards on Little Lake. And I mean, I'm telling you, obviously, this, fish, this lake's got some fish, but uh, there is no one doing this right now.
real deal. Real fishing information from real fishing experts. Presented by Amsoil. One of the things I like to do when I'm driving through Superior, Wisconsin, is stop in at the Amsoil headquarters, and they've got a distribution center here. And what's cool is, is I found out there's 12 different distribution centers across the country, and all of them have one of these factory stores in it. And the nice thing about that is you can come in and see all of the Amsoil products uh, up close and personal and learn about them. One of the products I learned about several years ago was Sabre, and Sabre is what you're gonna mix with your gasoline for any of your two-stroke engines. The cool thing is, is I brought in my gas can here, and you can see it says mixed gas. Doesn't say 40 to one, doesn't say 50 to one, it just says mixed gas. And that's because I was told by Len here, he's the product manager for Power Sports, that I could use Sabre at 100 to one in any of those engines. So maybe just tell us why I can do that and still all my engines will run great. People have many different kinds of power sports equipment. You've got augers, you've got generators, you've got all kinds of different two-stroke pieces of equipment. Right. Some run at 20 to 1, some run at 50 to 1. You can actually use less oil and run at 100 to 1 and still provide for the needs of all of those pieces of equipment that need 20 to 1 or 32 to okay. 1. And the way we did that, we had to actually do some testing. And when you take a look at the back of the bottle, we looked at the most stringent form of the two-cycle testing, and that's JSO FD. Okay. And what happens there is most of those tests, uh, there's a detergency and there's some lubricity tests and there's a bunch of technical stuff in there. They're run at 50 to 1. We chose to run those tests at 100 to 1. So we put the oil to the test at 100 to 1 and we still pass the highest industry standard. So that's how hmm. I can recommend that you just need one can for all of your equipment. So just like the package says here, mix everything 100 to 1. You heard all the technical reasons why it works from Len here. I'm telling you, I've been using it for several years in all my equipment and it really does work. 40, 50, 100 to 1. Sabre does it all. Gary Parsons and Eric Karish continued success. 60 feet back, channel cat. Trolling the outer, deeper edges of rock humps on smaller Wisconsin lakes for walleyes. Not only has them excited at the chance to demonstrate just how effective the technique itself can be. Hey, I'm gonna give this to you because I've got a board out there going all on right. 16 miles. I got it. Right. You need a pliers or anything? I got oh, that one we're going to need pliers, we're going to need you name it. But also the opportunity to share key experiences in their practice to help you spend more time fishing and catching. Hey, and we're reason. free. That's a nice Another fish. Another nice fish. Yeah. If you get a fish on your outside board and you have short lines, and this is only with short lines, if you're letting a lot of line out, you can't do it. But if you have short lines on the boards, it's, it's a pretty cool deal. You basically are going to shuffle your two inside boards to the outside. And the way you do that, Eric, why don't you grab that rod like you've got a fish on the outside. Eric will be actually bringing the rod in real slow. I'll come down and free spool both of these rods. And I take the clickers off and I just let them go. They're sitting there still in the water and they're sliding back. What he's doing now is bringing that board to the front of him. And as soon as I know that that board that he's reeling in with the fish on clears these two, I click them back in position. Click, click. I just set these two lines then to the outside so I've got to go over the top of him and he could actually still be reeling. That puts him into a position where he's now the rear rod and we can net the fish. We have any tangles at all, plus these two other boards have shuffled to be the outside and the next one in. So instead of having to reel in all your lines, this is just a, a rolling situation where you're shuffling it out and you can keep right on fishing. This is a nice fish. Okay. Well, this gonna... is a really nice fish. Okay. Definitely gonna need the net. All right, I'm gonna kick this in neutral. Actually, I'm gonna just give it a little bit here. Still on there good? Good fish. Right. I'm gonna get that net. Good much? fish, Gary. We're all 30 feet. 20. 10. Oh, there he is. He's That's coming a nice up. One. Oh, there's a good one, Eric. What a beautiful wow. fish. Wow, that's a good fish. This is a northern Wisconsin fish. Holy man, out in the mud. He, he T-boned her too. <laughs> he had it good. Woo, that is a good one. That is a nice fish. 
So trolling on small lakes obviously can be a fun, overall alternative technique, great for numbers and even size. But on these Wisconsin bodies of water, in addition to weed beds, lines, or even back bays, bogs can provide some pretty unique structure that should be added to your list of areas to take a closer look at. Pitch into the bog. Pitch into the bog. When jigging as part of a technique for speed patterning areas to narrow down. Good one, huh? That's a good fish. Yeah, I can see that. Right kind. Is he? Sweet. Kind of staring at him. <laughs> or is the sole area of opportunity at just simply having fun catching walleyes? Fish on. You got one? They've been That's biting nice good. Fish. Nice eye. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. The bogulator. Nice one. Pitching the wood in the bog. That one came out a little deeper, Gary. Yeah. Leading information on tackle and techniques to make you a better fisherman. Presented by Mercury. Hey, we're down at Big Cedar Lodge for Tracker Media Days on Table Rock Lake, and I have a pretty cool opportunity right now. I have Robin Singer right here. He is the Merc Professor. It's what everyone calls him. This guy knows everything there is to know about all the Mercury products. And this engine right here, it's the second year that it's been in production. It's the Mercury 154 stroke. Literally, in the mid-size boat class last year, took the entire industry by storm. What goes into building an engine like this and what makes this engine perform so well. So you know the, the 150 is kind of unique. It's a, a big liter block, three liter block. And it's the same displacement that the Pro XS has on it. Really? Yeah, and <laughs> even though it's the biggest and lar largest displacement, it's also the lightest four stroke in that category out there by 20, 25 pounds. Well, that's a big deal. I mean, that's whole shot, that's top end you're talking, that's where you get that. Everything the boater wants. Gets that boat on plane, carries the boat for that mid-range fuel economy. You know, we're not gonna be at the pump all the time. And then again, that all important top speed, if it starts to rain, you got to get in off the lake. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as far as maintenance on this engine, that's one thing that Mercury really did a good job with this. It's about, it's about keeping our customers on the water, on the fish, instead of working on the, the engine and the boat. Primarily it's a four stroke, so we got to take care of the oil. Annually we want you to change it, service it. We put some pickups on it that makes it really easy to drain the oil. A do it yourself or in the garage can do it. We've even got a decal on the engine that pretty much outlines what needs to be done and you know what if you, you're not technical take your smartphone hit the QR code it'll take you to a mercury marine website tell you everything you need to know how to take care of this beauty you know this like I said is the second year that this engine's been out uh, phenomenal product when you're looking at deep V boats in the north in that mid-size range having earlier demonstrated the effectiveness and details behind a smaller body of water's trolling bite. Woo! That is a good one. What is it that an angler can expect to run into specifically? Catch another one, baby. When including bogs as an area to fish for walleyes. Nice eye. Oh, that's a good one. Or even other species of fish when jigging. What you see here on the shoreline is a boggy shoreline. And in some of the lakes, the bogs themselves they actually float, but in many other places like we have right here, the bog is a shoreline, but the neat thing about it is there's usually pretty darn deep water next to it. In this case, I'm in seven and a half feet of water, and it's a short underhand flip really to the shoreline. So that bog comes out and it creates a wall, and then you've got sometimes weeds and cabbage and reeds and a lot of wood, a lot of fallen down timber that litters the bottom between the boat and yourself. Kind of a meticulous thing. You have to pitch in there and work your jigs through the, through the wood and everything, and you don't really know exactly where you'll, you're going to contact a school of fish. So the one thing that I like to do is to go to the little eighth ounce jigs and two and a half inch gulp tails. And you guys all know that I love this rig, but the main reason is I can fish it fast, I can fish along these shoreline edges until I contact a school of fish, and then you can pitch jigs and still catch them. Now, once you catch them, if you really start getting the mother load, you could always slip the anchor down and slip over fish these areas, and probably catch even more fish. Fish on. Good one. Nice one. Is We're going to need the net, Gary. All right. 
Nice fish. How's he feel? Good, nice one. Oh yeah, beauty. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. <laughs> nice wow, fish. That's a nice fish. He came out a little bit deeper, huh? Yep. Wow, that's a good one. He he whaled that one too. He hammered it. Oh, you're using that parrot head also. That's a nice good head. fish. Yeah. Cool. Nice color. Well, you're doing the job on these babies today. <laughs> well, that's had, good. I had a good teacher. The next bite could be a catfish. <laughs> you just don't know. We're getting B-roll here, buddy. Tell us where the big ones are. Who says walleyes only live on the bottom? <laughs> You hang around with the old timers. <laughs> what do you mean? Am I like describing myself? <laughs> just the baby. He's just the baby. Nice little two year old. The, the bogulator. Work in the wood. Work in the wood. <laughs> On a crankbait! Eric caught this fish. I did not catch this fish. Eric <laughs> caught this fish. 